gene therapies for hemophilia have made a tremendous progress on their way mm, to the clinic where they are now. Uh, it has progressed through fits and starts. Um, despite uh, progress in other treatment modalities along the way. And that's because gene therapy is really the only intervention that can fill the gap between how much hemostatic protection a hemophilia treatment can provide and how much is needed for the patient to live life independent of treatment. Um, ultimately, only gene therapy has that potential and also to be a one-time intervention that will, that will fix the problem. So, so the, the current gene therapies come remarkably close to the goal, but, but they don't reach that goal uh, yet. There's a number of problems, problems around um, and uncertainties around um, uh, safety and efficacy. As far as efficacy, um, yeah, there are issues with uh, variability and unpredictability of um, the therapeutic effect. Um, and some of those problems are related to um, our lack of fundamental biological understanding of gene transfer uh, in humans. There's really um, multiple issues that have been only cursely studied in the clinic. And uh, there is a feeling in the scientific community that if we, if we put more attention to those, um, we, we might be able to solve some of those problems. And um, the same uh, pertains to uh, safety. There are several uncertainties around uh, safety. We see mild toxicities in patients receiving uh, gene therapies for both hemophilia A and B. This is more the case uh, for hemophilia A. Um, and while these look um, mild and transient, uh, it's concerning that we don't really understand why they occur in the first place. Um, and we certainly don't want um, uh, those unanswered questions to, in the future, to turn into unheeded warnings or wasted opportunities. Uh, and therefore, we should, we should uh, pay more attention and do more basic research to better understand uh, this treatment modality.